Hi, I'm John, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, set the timing on a, a dual overhead cam 4.6. That this engine came out of a Lincoln Mark 8, out of a 97 Lincoln Mark 8, and we're going to put it in a 97 Mustang GT. Uh, this we've already swapped the cams to Cobra cams. Uh, the the cams actually came out of a 98 Cobra and that basically is the only difference between the uh, Lincoln Mark 8 engine and the 96 to 98 Cobra engine is the the cams. Uh, I When I look at the exhaust cab, the main difference is the intake cams. You can see the duration. Uh, you can see the lift is uh, much, much higher on the intake cams, but I also noticed uh, the exhaust cams look like they got uh, more duration uh, than the stock cams. And uh, I'll see if I can show some on video a little later, but uh, uh, this is basically, uh, this is gonna, this is basically gonna be uh, a video on how to set up the timing on a DOHC engine. Um, this will, it will be the same procedure on any 96 to 04 uh, Mustang Cobra that's uh, or a GT that's been converted to a dual overhead cam uh, 4.6. The procedures, like I said, are going to be the same for any of those years. I'm not sure how well this will show up on camera, but here are the intake and exhaust cams with the lobes facing straight up. You can see that the intake is a little bit higher, a little more duration than the exhaust cam lobe. And here are the camshafts that came out. Uh, I don't know if it'll show up on the camera very well, but the intake, uh, specifically the intake on the Cobra cams is, is much greater lift and duration. Uh, I think from my calibrated eye that the exhaust also has more duration as well. Okay, so the cams on these have already been torqued down in sequence. There is a torque pattern for these. That's basically start from the center of each one and work your way out in a circular fashion. When you disassemble your heads, it's a good idea to try and lay them out in order that they've been removed. You see this is the right hand side or the passenger side, all the timing components for that side, the reluctor wheel, all the timing components for the driver's side and the driver's side cams. The first thing you want to do is get your cams oriented correctly and each cam is going to have a keyway in it. You're going to want to orient that keyway to where they're both facing this direction towards the crank. Now, almost every set that I've done has had these discolored keys. They're just a little bit darker than the rest of the keys on the chain, on the secondary chains. And those are gonna line up with these little dots that are on the sprockets. And then the keyways will slide inside. And when I took the chains off, the, the tensioner uh, plunger actually came out. So when you push these chains in, you have to compress this at the same time as you walk the chains on there. It's kind of tricky. Uh, you want to, once you get this up in there, uh, you get the chain going over it a little bit and then slowly work the chain uh, back up over the, the tensioner. You can double check that your dark keys are lined up with your dots. Your keyway is still facing down. 
And now you're going to do the same for the right side or the passenger side. Make sure your keyways are oriented in this direction. Same thing, you can see the dots on the keyways lined up with the darker dots of the chains. So you can see that it can be kind of a pain to get on there. Basically, you just want to work it, compress it, move the chains in, move the move the sprocket in. Take your time with it. Don't break anything. Make sure you don't get any of your glove pinched in there and leave leave a piece of rubber inside there. Okay, now we're moving down to the crankshaft and getting that to its proper placement uh, to begin the procedure for the primary chains. If you're going to be moving the crank, uh, you want to make sure that you do not have your lash adjusters in there, your cam followers in there. Because if you have valves down right now uh, that are not attached to the timing chain and you go moving the, the crank around, you're going to be moving those pistons up and down. You could, you could get some piston to valve contact and cause damage to your engine. So if you do not have your cam followers out right now, uh, is a good time to take them out so that uh, you can move this around without fear of damage. There's a couple different ways that you can move the crankshaft. They have uh, crankshaft tools that go on the end of it. They have a little slot in there for the woodruff key to slide into. And you slide that on there and you would take your half inch drive And you can move it that way. If you don't have that tool, you can use an adjustable wrench. And you're gonna wanna move the keyway to about the 10 o'clock, 10 10.30 position, somewhere in that area. So you're gonna wanna move the keyway to about that position. That's straight up, about that position. There are two different types of crank sprocket, the two-piece, which is what this is, and a one-piece that came on the later models of the DOHC 4.6s. But there's only one correct way, if you have the two-piece, to put it together, and it's like this. You can see the raised portion, uh, those two portions meet each other, uh, and you can use either side. You can see the keyway. The keyways line up on both of them and the timing mark will point straight down. Here's a close-up of how the keyway is. Pointing in that direction. And the timing mark points straight down. Okay, before we go any further, we can put the spacer and cam bolt on and the primary sprocket and the same thing on the passenger side spacer and sprocket. Now your primary chain, it's gonna have discolored links in it as well. Most of the time they'll have discolored. I'm not sure if you can see it in this video or not, but this link is darker than the other links. And the reason why I have the chain set up like this is if you do not have markings on your chain links, you can lay it all flat like this 
and then mark the two outer links. So you can see this one's darker, but let's say none of the links were dark. Uh, you could put a dot on this link and then all the way at the opposite end, put a dot on this link. Okay, so this is a view from the primary sprocket on the crank and you can see the timing chain mark right there. That's gonna be the same for the front sprocket as the rear sprocket. So you're gonna take your chain and there's your there's the dark tooth right there. That one is the darker tooth. And you're gonna line that one up with the tooth that has the line on it. So here's our dark sprocket. There's the same tooth that the line intersects with. And now moving up here to the primary sprocket on the exhaust cam. Here's our dark sprocket. There's our dot on the cam. You're gonna get that link onto there. Just walk it up around. Okay, so we got the primary chain lined up. You can see the off-colored sprocket lined up there. Follow around to the bottom and you can see the dark sprocket is lined up here. Okay, hopefully you're using steel bodied tensioners. Uh, if not, I highly recommend that you purchase a set of steel body tensioners. The plastic ones um, have been known to fail. They'll crack in this area here and they'll bleed out oil. Uh, steel bodied ones, either Ford Motocraft or Cloys makes uh, steel bodied ones. Now these are ratcheting type, so we have to, we have to, we got this on the vise here. And as we push in the plunger, this ratchet, we'll have to move this ratchet in. You want to be careful there you can see you have to be careful so when you move the plunger in come over here push in on that ratcheting plunger and then move I can't do it and hold the camera at the same time but then as you hold that in you push that in until it contacts there and then and, then, and you slowly work it in so I'm gonna move the camera back and do it but I wanted to give a close-up so you can see what's going on. Make sure you're not breaking your ratchet there. Once that, once that pin goes inside there, you can release the vise and the Tensioner will stay inside. Now it's ready to put on the engine. Okay, back on our engine. Uh, we're gonna put our tensioner arm on there. When you're putting these back on there, it's a good idea to inspect the plastic area for any cracks or uh, any signs of excessive wear. When your tensioner goes on, you wanna make sure the surface is nice and clean of any debris. Uh, same with on your your cylinder heads that this area here is clean and free of any debris this will fill up with oil that's what puts tension on your your tensioner this fills up and pushes pressure on the tensioner arm Okay, once you got your tensioner in place and snug down, you can pull the pin and it'll put tension on your chain so that uh, the likelihood of it skipping a tooth and you losing your timing is, is minimized. Okay, now moving on to the right side or the passenger side, you just follow the same procedures. On this one, you can see I put a little dot on the chain link just to make it a little bit more visible and line that one up. Walk it around the sprocket. Now up top on the cam sprocket, there's our dot. There's a dot on this cam. Now you can put your tensioner arm on. Now 
when you do your tensioner, make sure that it's the surface is smooth and free of any debris. Same with the other side, along with your tensioner. And then pull your pin. Okay, so now we have the chains, the tensioners, uh, everything in place. Nothing uh, has been torqued down yet. What I like to do is once I got everything in place, I like to go through and just double check what I can see that the secondary chains are still lined up, that they didn't move. Uh, the primary chains are still lined up. The primary sprocket is still lined up. If you're doing this while it's in the car, you may have to get a mirror down here to check that back one to make sure that it's still lined up. If everything looks good, go ahead and torque to spec. And don't forget, don't forget to put your reluctor wheel back on there. The engine will not fire up without this. This is what tells the cam, uh, crank position sensor where the crank is. There are two different types of these. This is the thicker type that is used with the two-piece primary sprocket, crank sprocket. If you have the one-piece sprocket, there's a thinner version of this that gets used. Uh, do not forget this. It's very common to forget to put this back on and then put your timing chain cover on. Uh, everything's torqued down, all that stuff. Go to fire up your car and, and it uh, it won't even fire up. It'll turn over, but it won't fire up. These also, on um, both uh, both styles, the stamped steel and this one, they'll say on there what is rear. And that just slides on. Now you torque everything down. Put your timing chain cover on. Make sure you're going to put your RTV where the cylinder head meets the block and down here on the corners. Uh, and when you do your valve covers, you're going to put another bead up in here. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe and there will be more to come.